we've been addressing eldership qualifications in Ask Pastor Bill segments, and um, in light of that, a woman in, Re- in Redemption Hill Church asked, what about women? We have all these qualifications for men and their jobs in the church. What, do we, what is the role of women in the church? And that's a question we get a lot at the church, particularly in a place like D.C. We have a lot of women in our church who are, um, are in careers, and, and we have dual-income households. We have some stay-at-home moms, and so a variety of things that women in our church find themselves involved in. It is always a question of how do these things cross over to the church? What does the Bible teach about women's roles in the family and in the church? And um, are, are there implications outside of those settings? And so as we think about those things, um, the there's truth that Redemption Hill holds to a very high authority of Scripture, God's Word, the Bible, as God's infallible and inerrant Word, as our authority on all matters of faith and practice as a church, and that we do see clear biblical teaching on men and women. Um, and so there's five theological principles that, that form a foundation for us. The first is that God, in his wisdom, created human beings in his image and likeness. That's what we read in Genesis chapter 1, that we are made in the image of like, and likeness of God, male and female, he created us. And so it's, it, is, it takes both men and women to bring the fullness of God's image and likeness into his creation. And the church needs both men and women involved in investing into the work. Um, and so the second principle then extends to family, that God has given us marriage. It was God's grace and his provision for Adam's loneliness in the garden, and creation wasn't declared good until Eve was made. And so the union of the two brought together, male and female, is what constitutes God's design for marriage, and um, the marriage relationship that he created was a man and a woman come together, they are joined as one flesh, and leave their parents' household. So the third then builds on that, that, that men and women are distinct throughout Scripture that they're different from each other, that we were made to be different, by God made to be different, but that we are fully equal, equal in bearing God's image and likeness, equal in dignity and value and worth, equal in oneness and access to Christ, equal in co-heirs of the grace of life, is what we read in 1 Peter. So God's grace is extended to us, and that, that there are no distinctions in salvation and coming to God as his children. We are all one in Jesus Christ. So the fourth principle then extends beyond that. This is family-based, but the fourth theological principle is in our foundation is that the church is a family. And this is important. If we think of a church as being board-driven or just a nonprofit or like any other business or organization, it's going to get very confusing and biblical principles just don't make sense. And so elders aren't primarily a board. Elders are primarily the theological heads responsible before God, but they're primarily theologically, theological um, gatekeepers for the church, the theological authority in the church. Um, and when we turn them into a strict board, it's going beyond strictly what's in Scripture. And really the imagery is that the elders are the dads of the church, that the church is a family. And so that's, then that leads to the fifth principle, is that... Um, is the principle of what we would call male headship within the home. And so this isn't to say that wives and women are supposed to submit to all men. That's not what the Bible says. But in Ephesians 5, Paul's very clear that wives are called to live in respect and submission to their own husbands, and husbands then are called to model Christ in their families, that they are responsible before God for the spiritual well-being and the flourishing of their wives and their families, and so the call to women is to help their husbands in that pursuit. So this then becomes a model for the church that the elders of the church are those who are responsible before God for the flourishing well-being of the people in the church, and that includes the women of the church who are an active part of the body. So those are the five theological principles for us, but then how do those work themselves out practically? That's been an important question for us at Redemption Hill, and it's important because from the church's earliest days, women have been important and full members of the covenant community. From Acts 1, we see that. And we see in 1 Timothy and in, in Romans that, that women were deaconesses, serving in official capacities in churches as ministry leaders. We see in Acts that Priscilla discipled and trained Apollos, and she and her husband, Aquila, hosted and led a house church. We see that in Romans. We learned that Tabitha was 
was a leader of mercy ministries to the poor, and Euodia and Syntyche were women who labored side by side in gospel work. And so women spoke and prayed in public worship. We see that in 1 Corinthians 11. And, um, and even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there are women who were prophets and prophesied. And so women have always had an important role in the covenant community. And so part of our question has been, how do we work out in 1 Timothy 3, where it seems clear, where it is clear that, that elders of the church are men, that's the only, the only role in the church that's reserved to men. If they're the dads of the church, then who are the moms of the church? So to meet this need, particularly in Redemption Hill Church, a team of spiritually mature, godly women has been formed. We call them our Titus II team. The Titus II team comes alongside the pastors and elders, particularly on pastoral care for women, but they meet regularly with our elders, we pray together, they let us know about needs in the church and in the body, and we help them to figure out how to best carry out the work of ministry they're called to, and that team is to reflect Paul's instructions to young pastor Titus in Titus chapter 2, where it gets its name. And in Titus chapter 2, we read, Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, or slaves to much wine. They're to teach what is good, and so train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure and working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. And so those qualifications for the Titus II team and Titus II women are really echo a lot of the qualifications we've talked about for elders. Um, even in that women have a role important that in the church for teaching, and particularly for shaping and discipling younger women. And so the church needs both men and women. And among leadership, we need both dads and moms. And so in Redemption Hill, our Titus II team and our elders work side by side in the leadership of our church as those who are, are pushing to closer to Jesus, leading us on the way, and and protecting the theological foundations and the, and, and the gospel, ultimately, in our midst. So, the answer is that women have an essential role in the church. As we look at the qualifications for elders, that applies to all Christians, but in Redemption Hill, we've taken particular steps to make sure that both men and women are represented in particular leadership roles that are essential and vital to the body, reflecting the foundation of, of theologically that we have in Scripture, but pursuing Jesus together. So thanks for the question. Um, if you have a question, you can always send it in on our website or through the app to let us know, and we'll be, we'll be excited to be able to answer what's next.